format will be opening statement from coach, and we'll move on to questions for the student athletes. Oh, they, they threw a curveball at me, coach. <laughs> Give me a second. Let you make an opening statement. All right. Um, great game. Great game, I thought, uh, with UConn. They did a great job. Um, really proud of our players who have done a really good job coming in. I thought we had a really good game plan, but we let the first quarter kind of get out of hand. Um, you know, being in this environment, tough environment, obviously having the, the UConn having the, the on court home court advantage, and I thought our players had jitters in that first quarter trying to get after it. But overall, I asked the players to contest every shot. I asked them to slow the ball down from being rotated side to side. Um, we were, the game plan was to run multiple defenses at UConn and just kind of mix them up a little bit. Um, we really wanted a different outcome, wanted our players to be more competitive. But overall, I thought that, you know, we did a great job, and I'm just really proud to be able to continue to play in the first round um, against a really good UConn. Questions for the student athletes? Up front, Pat. Uh, for, for both of you, can you just talk about that, that first quarter and they went on a 17-0 run and you guys were kind of never able really to recover fr from that. What were they doing that was it doing anything that surprised you? Was Paige better than you thought? I mean, obviously you knew she was going to be good, but was, were, were they better than you thought they were going to be, or what happened there in the first quarter? Um, I feel like it was all on us. Uh, we, Like Coach Reed said, we did come out with some jitters. Um, we expected um, UConn to play that way, so it was mainly just how we played, how we were, how we came out for the first half. It just wasn't Jackson State basketball, but I'm glad we did pick it up at the end. Um, I would say that the first quarter, the first quarter jitters were definitely on us. They just took advantage and made the shots. Um, if we would have defended better and locked in more, then I think it would have been a better outcome. Questions for the student athletes? Right here on the right. The next, um, can you two just talk about um, the support from your fans and the pep band um, who traveled you know, halfway across the country to come and support you um, in a, a room full of a lot of UConn fans. Um, I love my HBCU. I love my fans. I love the band. That was really sweet of them. We were excited when we loaded up. And it made us feel at home that we had to bring some home to Connecticut. Uh, it was amazing seeing our fans in the stands. Um, just knowing that they came out here to support us means so much to us. Uh, we feed off of their energy. They feed off of our energy. So um, I want to just give a shout out to everybody that came out. Um, and we love we love our the boom. We love the boom. Right here on the left on the aisle. She loves Lee podcast, Tamona. I wanted to ask this question to Bowler. Played a light. You had 25 points. Um, can you talk a little bit about your game adjustments from the first half to the second half where you picked it up? Um, I would say that I was just being relentless because at one point I wasn't even looking at the score. I was just like chipping away, trying to get, you know, back into the game. Like I didn't like see a person in front of me at a point. Like I just saw Ram, so I was like, okay. In the first quarter, I kind of was a little jittery. I admit that, but I kind of let it go. Like second, the second media timeout, that's when I knew like, oh, I'm in this moment. I'm just as good as them. So that's when I started playing like it. Question here on the right. My question is for Angel. Angel, so I uh, ex-coach R.E.M. about your um, play. He mentioned you in terms of, of how you were able to help the team today. Um, what do you take away from this experience? Um, it was a great experience just playing on um, the 
this stage. This is my first March Madness, so uh, it felt amazing. Uh, I want to say thank you to Coach uh, Gino. It, it it really was a, the best time I could have. So I, I'm glad I did get to play on the stage and show off on my team. And you know, although we did come up short, I'm glad of how we performed. Second row on the right over there. Um, Angel, I saw a, a look of pride on your face um, when your teammates started talking about herself. Can you just talk about her performance um, and how excited you were to see her accomplish that? Um, you guys don't know this is my bestie. Um, I'm so <laughs> proud of her. Uh, I met Tilly last year. She's been outstanding, phenomenal for us. Um, she always knows how to get, get the ball in, but she knows how to create her shots. So I just love the way she played and glad that she did come out because that's what got us going today. She played so hard, and we had to follow behind her, and we stepped it up with her. We'll go up front to Pat. For both of you, uh, social media blew up just a little bit. Uh, I know you gave up two points on the play, but can you guys talk about Maya's athleticism and getting up there and getting a goaltend call <laughs> in, in the women's game and just what you guys showed in terms of <laughs> athleticism and what you can do out there? She does that every practice. She do that every practice, literally. Like no matter if she the only one running, she going she's gonna be determined to get that ball and tap it. She do it every day. So I was really shocked that she did it. Like I, it was like I was shocked, but I wasn't, cause she did it every day. If you go like to our game, our sweat game, she does it every time. She goes on fast break, every time. Uh, she just have a relentless effort. She's gonna chase down them balls every time. So I know once that ball go up, Maya Crump is going to be at the rim. She's going to meet you at the rim. She's she's fearful. She's an amazing player. Yeah, she's not afraid to jump with anybody. No. Like nobody. She's not, not afraid. To, she's not afraid. <laughs> she's going to she's going to jump with you. She don't matter how tall you is. She's going to jump with you. Question here on the left. Question for Angel Jackson. You know, being the defensive player of the year in the SWAC, can you talk a little bit about um, the defense that you? display today, the blocks, and um, blocking people out and going against um, Aaliyah Edwards, how you prepared yourself, whether it was watching film? Um, yeah, I did prepare myself by watching film, just not really coming in thinking that, oh, they're going to give it to me, it just um, making sure I check off all my assignments. My defense was a little slow at first today, but I feel like I did pick it up uh, as the game came on, went on. So. Um, it was just, it was a great matchup. Um, I did have to, you know, struggle with some fouls uh, a little early, but I feel like second half was a better defensive half. We'll take a question from Zoom. Rob, go ahead. Hey, ladies. Uh, this is Rob Knox from the Next. Um, obviously, great season uh, and uh, for, for you all. Congrats on everything you all accomplished. Uh, what will you, what will you both remember most about this year? Maybe not just from a basketball standpoint. Obviously, you all done a lot of winning, and that's been you know documented and, and so much. But what is something you're going to remember most about this season that maybe we don't know? That something behind the scenes, something um, unique to Jackson State. Uh, I say I remember our boot camp in preseason. Um, that's the hardest time of our lives. Uh, we have to really get after it for a week straight. Waking up 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we were rolling in dirt. We were in mud. We, it was like a real army boot camp. So I would say that made us stronger and it made us, it prepared us for this moment because we knew not to back down. We knew that we had to fight for what we wanted and we had to just stay level headed the whole game, the whole season. And I'll never take that away from my experience here at Jackson State. Um, I would say boot camp as well because boot camp for Jackson State is an understatement. It's really an understatement, like the getting up early every day and then class, and then you got to go to treatment, and then you got to find food in your body. Like that's like a, that's a mental process. So I carried that on, the team carried that on, and we knew that, we knew that like there was no stopping us after that because the boot camp, it was tough. It was real tough. <laughs> but it was fun though. It was fun though because it's like teamwork, like, you know, like, we was picking each other up, rolling through the mud, flipping tires, we was racing, so, yeah. We have time for one more for the student athletes. All right, ladies, thank you very much. And thank you.
questions for Coach, we'll go right up front to Pat. Coach, obviously you'll get to see and read the comments later, but Coach Oriema went on for at length about you and your program and your league and um, the respect that you guys deserve, um, especially after what you did this, this season. So can you talk a little bit about representing your league and what you think your, your team did this season? You know, um, I really appreciate um, Coach for those w wonderful words that he said. I, I get a chance to read it or see it later. Um, but for me at Jackson State, you know, um, I not only wanted to put our university on the map, I wanted to put HBCUs on the map. We have such a special community that a lot of people overlook. We have a community that's not built on wins and losses, but built on family and love. And, you know, that's, I just wanted to be a great representation for that. Um, when I came to Jackson State, I wanted to build a team that could be dominant in our conference, but also a team that could be competitive in outside of the conference versus Power Five institutions. And so I'm an advocate for HBCUs. I'm an advocate for our representation, our proper representation. And, um, you know, I, I, I commend our coaches when they do a good job, when they win big games, because when they do well, it makes the entire um, conference look good. It makes all HBCUs look good when they do good, a good job. Grambling did a good job in beating a Power Five. Southern did a great job in beating a top Power Five. You know, um, uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff did a great job in beating the Power Five. We had some really good basketball, and and that's what that's what it's all about. And you know, we want the, the the best representation to come to the NCAA tournament, so that we can bring an awareness to what we do, an awareness to who we are, an awareness to our community, um, and continue to hope that we can continue to grow um, the greatness within it. Questions. Natalie Hubbard with the next. Um, can you just talk about um, either a moment you're most proud of of your team this season or the growth that you've seen um, over the course of the season? Um, you know, I'm really proud of our players for being determined to go back out and be successful this year. Um, we were on a 43-win streak uh, last year when we got our first loss, and our players took that to heart. Um, we also lost in the tournament last year, and our players didn't take that too well. This team coming in this year, were extremely tough, mentally tough, and they were resilient. Um, going 21 and 0 was not easy by any measure. If it was easy, it doesn't matter the level, if it was easy, it would be done more across the country. And so I'm just really proud of our players for being able to be resilient through tough times. You know, people see the record, but they don't know what, we, what we've gone through to get to, to where we, we are and to get to where what we was able to do this year. And so this is a really special team. You know, we had to lock, in, lock out a lot of noise. We had to lock in and be focused on our vision. Uh, we had several distractions this year, but this team stayed the course. Um, and, and, you know, hats off to my staff as well. We, we don't have a good team. We don't have a solid team. We don't have a mentally tough team without a great staff and a great athletic director and great administrators. So I'm just really proud of um, the team for um, being able to play with a target on our back. You know, every game we played was a championship game. You know, when teams made, they made their runs, you know, the fans cheered like it was a championship game. And we had to push through that. And so I'm just really proud of our players and the effort that they gave this year. Really special team. We'll go back to Zoom. Rob, what's your question? Hey, Coach. Um, it's Rob again. Uh, again, obviously, um, phenomenal job with everything this year. Uh, my question to you is uh, kind of along the lines of, of how, how you open to how you open here with just the, the respect. Uh, obviously, um, Coach Vickers at Norfolk State, uh, you know, last year, Don Staley walked into his locker room last year and, you know, said, hey, you guys should have been 16 C. Tara Vanderveer had some good things, to, great things to say about Norfolk State last night and obviously Gino today. Um, you know, as coaches, and especially at, at this level, um, how how important how important is it when coaches like that of that stature are, are using their platform to to support uh, the work that you're doing and, and, and making sure that it's also amplified beyond just the media? You know, it's really important, and I'm extremely thankful that uh, coaches are recognizing what we are able to do at this level. 
Um, a lot of times it's not taken serious. A lot of time it's overlooked. But what we do, we're doing the same thing with less. You know, we, we have, we're getting our players prepared to play at this, this, this level um, with a lot less than what these bigger schools have. And to have these coaches could call that moment out is a really good feeling. You know, I'm extremely thankful for what the NCAA has done in terms of the rules that have been changed for our game to be more competitive um, and for our game collectively to be more respected. Um, our numbers grew last year in the NCAA tournament because our players brought a lot of excitement to the floor. Women's basketball is what I'm talking about. A lot of excitement to the floor. The game is growing. We have pioneers like Coach Staley, Coach Gino, um, and, you know, giving these, these great words to, about our coaches. But the game does not grow if, the, if all Division I levels doesn't grow. If the HBC, if the, the lower levels don't grow, the game doesn't grow. And so we need coaches to can continue to talk great things about us. We need to continue to build this level so that the game of basketball, women's basketball, can continue to grow. I would love to see this tournament go to a neutral site like men's basketball. We'll have a better chance. You know, teams coming in at the 16 seed, teams coming in at 15 and 14, I have a better chance to compete and, and not have those jitters, to be on an even playing field. So I would love to see the game continue to grow to that. But overall, it's all about growing the game of women's basketball. And, I, and having those big time coaches talk about us is, is phenomenal. It's outstanding and much appreciated. Question here on the right. Coach, my question kind of goes along with uh, the comments you just made. Um, have you had the chance, I know you didn't get the outcome you wanted today, but have you had the chance to think about what you truly brought to the game of women's college basketball and where it's going? Um, you know, I, I, I haven't really had a chance to really do that type of evaluation. Um, but I do know that, you know, I'm really proud that Jackson State University has made national attention. I'm really proud of the respect that people have for our program. Um, I'm thankful, you know, um, and I just think collectively we are growing. You know, you have, you know, um, the NCAA has put so many HBCU coaches and athletic directors and on the um, NCAA committees, that's huge. You know, um, I've been selected to be on the committee. Our voices are being heard. You know, that's big. And so um, I'm just extremely proud to be a vessel. That's all I want to do is to be a vessel and continue to grow the game. And I'm just really thankful for the space that has been provided, the good Lord has provided for us, and we want to continue to grow the game. Question here on the left. Simona Stapleton, She Loves the Podcast. Coach, you've had an amazing season. You're undefeated in the SWAC, and your motto is knock down walls. Do you feel like um, your season, um, your out of conference where you were playing uh, some of the bigger schools, you had a net ranking of 100, do you feel like you are getting closer and closer uh, to knocking down those walls, not just for Jackson State, but those HBCUs that you were previously speaking of? The, the ending of your statement is, is really important to me. The fight that I like to have for our um, university and for our conference and for the HBCU community is ongoing. You know, if we're not knocking down walls, the walls ha are being knocked down in other areas. Um, and by other schools in the HBCU sports. And so I'm extremely thankful for that. You know, people have come together and, and just respect. You know, it's, that's all. We, we, want this, we want the same opportunity that everybody else has. And um, we, have, we have made a lot of noise in that area. And for us, I think we've taken steps forward, we've gone back. That's the game of basketball. You know, that, that happens. Um, you know, in regards to being undefeated in the conference, very proud of that. But I don't coach to win the swag. I coach to win out of the conference. I coach to win the NCAA tournament. I coach to win preseason games against big schools. I coach to be in a top 25 AP poll. You know, why not? Why not Jackson State? So that's why I coach. And you have a lot of coaches who are now saying, it does not matter where I am. This is what I want to accomplish. And that, to me, is knocking down walls. Coach, thank you so much, and congrats on a great season. Thank you.